Today on the show, we've got two new high pivot bikes from Norco. We look at Michelin's latest enduro tires. And there's a trio of new e-bikes from Merida. High pivot idler bikes continue to be the hot ticket and Norco has just dropped two new bikes with that configuration, the Sight and the Optic. We've got the Optic in the studio here today and Jamie, you've been riding it, right? Yeah, I've been riding it. So I've got a question for you. Do high pivot idler bikes make sense on short travel trail bikes? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is... <laughs> you can't Have come I off the Have I gone too early, yeah. have I? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to park that. I'm going to put a pin in that over there because it can't <laughs> Do I need to warm us. you up a little bit? Yeah, totally. In any case, we need to talk about it first, right? Okay, so the, the, the deal with Give me the bike, basics. Okay, the deal is it's a high pivot design. It's got an idler, but it's also really short travel. It's 125 mil travel, and that is kind of the only time we've seen it that short travel. I've never known a bike to have 125 mil <laughs> hold travel on a second, James. and a high pivot oh, Hold idler. on a second, <laughs> hold on a second. Right, okay, so when I tested... He's gonna get out, he's gonna get out his Druid. Let me just get my notes here, right? When I tested the Druid in 2021... So Forbidden Druid, right? Yeah, yeah. I measured the travels, which is what we do in all the bike tests, at 125 mil. Okay. So this bike is not unique. And okay. in fact, they claimed 130 because they measure along the axle path, but yeah. vertical wheel travel was 125. I know what you're going to ask me now. I'm not going to ask you that. Yeah, and I, I don't you, know. <laughs> you I don't, don't know. know what the vertical wheel travel is. I don't is. know. That's okay. But it's an interesting link because when I interviewed Owen at Forbidden, I said that um, this is the, the Druid and this style bike was a bike that, that Norco would never have allowed him to make. Yeah. And five years on, they've made one. Yeah, and so for anyone who doesn't know, obviously Owen Pemberton yeah. is the, the founder and main designer of who Forbidden. Used, and used to work at Norco. He used to work at Norco yeah. and started off the whole kind of uh, high pivot idler bikes at Norco. So yeah. Should we talk about this bike again? Yeah. Sorry, we go back to this bike. You haven't answered my question. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, I'm getting, getting there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, short travel, but it's got the high pivot idler, um, which is, I don't know, a really cool concept, if you ask me. Um, okay, the question, does it, does it make sense? <sighs> Yes and no, like it's a, it's a really cool idea um, because there are some kind of proven suspension uh, performance improvements to have in that design. Like it does swallow big hits really, really well and it does hold you like really flat. So whenever you're going off a jump, jump or a drop, it's like super composed. You never feel like you're gonna kind of go over the bars. You land something, you land something a bit of crap and it kind of like soaks it up really nicely. And it's, it's really, really fast because of that. Um, and then the downside, in terms of suspension performance, I kind of, I kind of got buzzed on that bike. Maybe it's because I was going so fast, <laughs> but it kind of, you really feel it coming through. Like you feel the trail chatter coming okay. out, coming out through your feet and in your hands. So, so yes, yes and no. So you're talking about it working well on big bumps, yeah. right? Yeah. I but am. it's only got 125 mil of travel. Yeah. So it immediately makes me think, well. Should have just bought a bigger travel bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is that because you. I mean, you pay for it when you get this bike. You, you literally pay for it because you know it's gonna. It's cost you more money. There's more going onto this bike. There's more design. There's there's more of it. There's an idler. It's gonna so, be heavier. So it's, and more yeah, and it's gonna be it's gonna be heavier. It comes up just under 15 kilos. All it's right, like, so I'm gonna stop you there because if we're talking about like that kind of 120, 125 category bikes. So I've got the Transition Spur, like that's my favorite yeah. bike in yeah. that category. And I know it's built a little bit lighter than that, but 11.25 mm. kilos. Yeah. Uh, the Santa Cruz Tallboy, it's a bit burlier, but 13.08 kilos. What did you say this was? <laughs> it's nearly 15, it's like 14.7, something like okay. that. Okay. In size, size four. Yeah, okay. But I think the, the point is when I, when I think of a short travel trail ripper yeah. bike, I want it to be fast. I want it to pe be to pedal well, yeah. and I'm I'm gonna sacrifice some big bump performance. I know it's gonna be a bit mm -hmm. hectic on yeah. rough descents because there's always a trade-off. So, so like if you're trading off some pedal efficiency because there's drag in the system, extra drag in the system, you're trading off some weight. Like, what is your return? Like, yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> what is your return? You definitely lose some. Um, when you're pedaling uphill, when you're cranking up a fire road climb, it feels amazing. Like you don't feel that weight, you really don't. Like the bike just holds you. Like you don't bob, you, you, don't, you don't feel like you're wasting any energy. And like I think the idler on this bike is, uh, is amazing. It's like it's really big, 
you don't get one. You don't get the second idler lower down because you don't need it to tench to, so to put the chain on the chain ring. There's only the kind of extra drag at the top. So there's a, yeah, there's only a little bit of extra drag at the top. They've worked really hard on the teeth as well. They're only narrow, narrow, so it doesn't mimic the SRAM narrow wide. It's not the bike I would choose, I don't think. I think if you're having that extra complexity, you might as well have the extra travel because it's not going to give you, it's, it's not going to cost you much more in terms of weight or drag. So, you know, you might as well have it. Like I definitely felt the limits of the travel for sure, like going as fast as I could down the normal kind of like trails, enduro kind of trails, like you definitely reach the end of it. So you, so you had made an interesting point about who you think would actually yeah. buy this bike, didn't you? Yeah, I've got a theory about this bike. I think it's I think it's a macho bike. I think it's a bike for people who want to be seen as like aggressive, gnarly, enduro trail kind of riders. Uh, and then you get this bike and it says to people, I've, I've got this amazing bike that's for downhill, but I don't even need all the travel. I'm kind of that good. Yeah. It's like... And, you know, we know people like that. Yeah. I know people who've like texted me and said, hey, I can't believe you've got that bike. I really want that bike. And they are well, I mean, those kind of people. In our younger days, we were a little bit like <laughs> yeah. that. We, we yeah. kind of were buzzing on the, uh, the short, short, short travel 29ers when yeah. they sort of came yeah. out and, and they did feel really good. So, but yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It's, so uh, you just, so short travel 29ers, there's a short travel 29er. Mm -hmm. It's not just available as 29 only as a Oh yeah, we need to talk about the missing link. Missing kit. link, yeah, yeah. 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 So you can change the uh, wheel size at the back to mullet it, mm -hmm. um, and you need one of these, which you can, I'll show you. You have to swap this whole thing out. You put that there, and you get these bad boys. You slot these two in like that. But, and that corrects, but, but that, I don't know why. It corrects, well, it corrects the, the geometry. Yeah, it corrects the geometry. Yeah, yeah. But why, why they couldn't put a flip chip in? It probably hasn't got a big enough, normally a flip chip, doesn't correct it enough for everything. And also they might not have wanted to mess with the, the kind of suspension dynamics as well. Yeah. yeah that's, that's probably, it's, it's, this is the expensive, more difficult way to do it, but it's yeah. probably the right way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So they, I think you can get it in two different wheel size options, yeah. can't you? I think it comes 29, but you can mm -hmm. specify if you want to get it 27 and a half. Yeah. And um, it's li it's kind of limited in the UK, isn't it? There's, yeah. there's one of these optics, yeah. complete it's, bikes and the frame. Yeah. Brought in through Silverfish, isn't there? That's now? right. You actually can't get this bike. This is the C1. Yeah. Uh, in the UK, you can get you it. You can't get it in the UK. In so I think North in the America States, well. it's something like $8,000. Okay. Uh, you can get the C2 in this country with slightly le less good spec for like six, six and a half. And you can get it as a frame, frame shock. Mm. So that's the other thing is that if anyone's looking at the geometry on these bikes and they're going, ah, oh, it's got a pretty short chainstay. I mean, have, they have size specific chainstays. Yep. I don't know if they're proportional, but they're size specific. Yep. Um, and they look yeah. pretty short is that you do have to factor in the, the chainstay growth mm. with the, yeah. with the sag basically yeah. as the bike sinks in. They've done a really good job on the geometry and the sizing actually. It's like uh, S1 to S5 and the S4 there is like 500 mil reach. Mm. So uh, it's yeah. a big, it's a it big, big bike, bike. especially for a yeah. short travel bike. It's mm. big. So I think that rounds up the optic, doesn't it? Um, yeah. I think the, the great thing about it is it's another option, isn't it, that didn't really exist before. Um, you've, you know, you've got the Forbidden, you've got this. If you, if you want something different to what's out there, this is something really exciting, yeah. something new, fresh. That's the one, yeah. The next thing we want to talk about is Core Bike Show, which is a kind of distributor show in the UK, really busy, lots of brands there. And uh, we both went to that, didn't you? Yeah. You had a bit more time to walk around and see what was there. And uh, what, did you find anything interesting? Yeah, yeah, tons of new stuff, actually. I saw the uh, transition repeater, the SRAM powertrain motor. So like that is a monster of a bike and like it looked really good in the flesh, like 170 mil travel front and rear. Um, you know the motor it's like mm. 680 watts uh, yep. peak power like it's it i'm sure it's going to be a good bike it looked really cool michelin wild enduro do you remember those tires from mm -hmm. a few years back like super, super grippy. sluggish ones <laughs> yeah <laughs> like super grippy like protected yeah. your rims really well mm. but like you you couldn't ride them unless you're a pro athlete or a... they got the medium soft which is for loose conditions okay. and they've got the medium hard which is for more hard pack conditions okay. and then there's a rear that's just called rear okay. um, and something like 20 to 30 watts of uh, energy saving okay well that's uh, quite that's quite substantial isn't it yeah, yeah. yeah which is huge because like i don't know how much how many watts do you pop out that'll offset your that'll offset your idler right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> easily easily offset your yeah. idler but i'm not sure how they've done it like there's no detail about 
whether it's a different compound. I think well, it case, must be a different be, compound. I mean, it's probably everything, right? Because yeah, casing, yeah. compound, reinforcement, it all, yeah. it all plays a part yeah. in drag. So, and it, yeah. But it still feels like unbelievably tacky. Like I thumbed those knobs yeah. good and proper at yeah. the show and they were really sticking. We, in fact, we filmed the wheel, we filmed the tire on a wheel, like uh, somebody held it and I filmed it and then we picked it up and it was stuck. It was stuck to the cabinet. It was like... Yeah, the first came, time I rode those like, old Michelin tires, that they just picked up gravel yeah. from the road. Yeah. From, and I was like, and luckily I only put one on. I put one on the front just to check how slow they were. And I was yeah. so pleased I didn't put a pair on. But like, that yeah. sounds like a big improvement. Did you run, and you rode with Wind, wind Masters or yeah, something? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Paddled around on, he was pedaling yeah. those around. Yeah, totally. And those tires are really good. Can't wait to get on those. Um, what else did we see? Uh, RRP, Rapid Race Products, mm -hmm. has a new Pro Guard bolt-on. Uh, massive. It's like 600 mil. So maybe, what, is that going to wrap around a quarter of your <laughs> wheel or something like that? Yeah, they're all the circumference yeah. of a 29 inch wheel. Yeah. But... Um, so that looks amazing. It's, uh, they've made, they've managed to do that because they've made the plastic a lot more stable. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to flap around. And they've got these little gripper pads on the sides where it touches the fork. Oh, I saw those, uh, yeah, that's so cool. They told me less that, wear on the uh, paint and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, they actually told me that you could but it's got two bolts that go into the fork Back brace. brace. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could take those out, and the and the mudguard was stay put. Like they didn't say you shouldn't ride. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't ride like that. Okay. But but they said it would like it's that sticky. So so that's really useful. So yeah, tons of stuff. That's literally like just touching the surface. Yeah, like it, it was a good vibe at the show, and there were lots of good products. So yeah, that's not the only thing that's been going on as well. I mean, we've we've had the Norcos. We've also had. Three new bikes from Merida as well, haven't we? Three? Yeah. Wow, I think I missed one there. Yeah, another well, one you rode and then I rode one, but what was the third one? <laughs> well, they managed to tie themselves in knots with okay. the naming of these different platforms. Um, so I'm going to try and unravel this <laughs> <laughs> tangled web. Um, so there's the, there are two new E160s. They're all e-bikes. E160, you think that'd have it? 160 mil travel, travel wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. No, 174 millimeters of travel. In 27.5 rear wheel format? In 27.5 rear wheel format. It does have 160 when you put it in uh, the 29 inch yeah. format and then you alter the flip jip. But, the yeah. but that bike's always had a 27 and a half inch wheel. So yeah. the name of convention <laughs> hasn't come from that. Uh, and then there's also an E140, which does have actually kind of around, around about 140 mil travel. Um, but I'm going to park that bike for today and... Talk. That's the bike I didn't know about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. And I'm going to... We're going to talk about the one, E160 models because I think they're the most exciting ones. Now, where the real confusion comes in is uh, that there is, there is one bike that has a carbon frame and a small battery that you can't remove. And that's all about kind of weight saving, making it as agile as possible. Uh, and that is the bike that you rode. And that is called the CF. And then there's one which is as an alloy frame, uh, has a removable 750 watt hour battery, bigger battery, same all about geo, range. Same layout, same geo everything, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and they call that the light, yeah. even though it's about three or four kilos heavier, heavier than, the than, light the one, than the light one. Than the light one. <laughs> so if you check out the new Merida ranges, then you see the light, that is the heavy one. And then the other one is the CF, that is actually the light one. So one of the other uh, really key um, sort of differentiators with these models is that they use a flex day back end on the, both the E160s. Yeah. Now, in alloy like, and carbon, that. it doesn't matter which material. Exactly. Did Even, they get that from the, the normal bike as yes. well, didn't they? Because I, I rode that bike. And yes. It, just, it works really well. They have yeah. been using the Flex Day design for quite a few, few years now on the analog bikes. They've taken that technology onto the e-bikes and in both frame materials. Uh, and with 174 mil of travel, that's kind of unheard of, really. Um, so quite exciting, and obviously in an e-bike, they're not really doing it for weight saving. Let's be let's be honest about this. The reason for doing it is well, what one is cost saving. That's a big that's a big deal. Two is they're getting rid of parts and components. So um, there's lighter, it's lighter. <laughs> less to maintain, less, yeah. less to make, yeah. less to assemble, <laughs> less for consumers to replace. Come on, how much lighter is it going to be? I think 150 yeah, grams, yeah. something like that, maybe. I know it's not much, but yeah. it's, you take it out Come everywhere on. and adds up, right? The kind of selling point they're they're pitching to consumers is that there's one less pivot to replace down the line. Yeah. 
okay, we'll take we'll take that. That's fine. Yeah. Um, well, if it works so, well. So the thing is, well, that's the point, right? I'm pretty skeptical about flex day designs because I've had some bad experiences on them. I rode the, um, the E160, the CF, the top end bike with Fox factory suspension in Italy, and I was blown away by how good the suspension was. And like that bike has always had mind-blowingly good suspension from its launch, mm. and the new bike has this has a better suspension feel with modern geometry. It's pretty impressive. And I will concur, having ridden the alloy, alloy one, which is uh, you know the heavy one. The suspension was also amazing on that bike, and um, and I will concur. <laughs> Hiding the Merida, the, the original one, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, like, the, analog, the, the analog bike, the analog yeah. bike. It was really, it was really fun bike. It worked. The so, suspension worked really well. So what's the problem? So Merida basically said that there's only like I think it's three degrees of movement in the stays. So that's why there's not a, there's not a big a big spring force effect from the stays. There is some. So at the launch we actually took the shock out and cycled the suspension. You feel it kind of has a little bit of build up in in spring force, and then it gets to a point where it's like an inflection point, and then it actually helps compress the suspension towards the end. It's hard to tell when the shock's not in the bike because you don't know exactly where you are in terms of the travel, but the effect's minimal, but, but that bike has got a pitter-patter yeah. suspension response. It's unbelievable. I mean, yeah, when I rode it, I was like, this feels like a coil shock, coil sprung bike, yeah. uh, even though it's got an air shock on it. It was, it was that impressive. So yeah. yeah, they've really, really done a great job with the suspension. Yeah. I enjoyed riding that bike so much, I rode it in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, it comes with a light, right? <laughs> yes, and I was like, and I've never, always, we've always that's been the like, light. We, we've always <laughs> been like, what the hell's it got a light for? What a waste of time. Like, what am I going to do, go to the shops on it? But basically, you saw the footage, like it's dark. It was dark. Yeah. And I was like, let's do another run because I'm having such a good time. That's really cool. Some other key points about this bike, it's got the Shimano EP801 motor, but it uses a third party battery. So um, hence, you know, the 750, because Shimano doesn't make a 750. Yeah, and then the 600, 600 in, the, in, the in the lighter, lighter bike. bike. Oh, sorry, the CF. And then there's a 360 watt hour range extender, which is enormous. It basically take, fills the entire so front it's, triangle. So it's really, yeah, funny. it's really funny with that is that John showed me that, like, he's because it's got John those, from Merida, right? Yeah, Merida. He's got those two, there's those two big tabs on the mm. down tube basically that slots onto, so it's really secure. And the minute he put it on it, I thought on the CF bike because it's got a smaller down tube, I thought that looks like an e bike from like seven years ago because <laughs> yeah, it's because the, 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 the is the same. pretty much yeah. the same shape yeah. and size as the old Shimano, like yeah. 503 watt hour battery. Yeah. So that's so it's 1100. What hours? 1.1 <laughs> kilowatt hours. It's not yeah, kilowatt yeah. hours now. Yeah, like a, like so a Tesla or on, something. On, the, on the alloy bike, not on No, the, you can use it on both. Yes, but that's the the, the, the yes. numbers that Jamie yeah, says yeah, for you. Sorry, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm 150 So you could less. never yeah. get yeah. through. You could never get through I mean, that I'll juice, be, you'd, you'd, you'd have be to be dead. pretty physically strong because your, your yeah. bike, being, being that the uh, alloy bike weighs around 26 kilos, throw another three kilos on that. You've got a 29 kilo bike yeah. you're going to be riding around for, I don't okay. know, hours. So yeah. I, I think actually it's more for the guy with the 600 on the CF bike that maybe wants to go on some big rides. You bolt, I mean, you bolt it's, it on. Yeah, it's the like, option's there for anyone, yeah, isn't it? It's pretty cool. The interesting thing is to, to accommodate this uh, range extender, so they've ro rotated the shock. So the piggyback now sticks out the drive side, kind of where your thigh is. Doesn't actually rub. It looks like it's going to, but it doesn't. Danny, I'm going to contradict you here because I actually could feel the shock. Um, okay. Just on the inside of my thigh. Got a bigger couple, thighs than me, then. I don't know about that. <laughs> but like, just, 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 just maybe good. just on the way I was cornering and on those trails, not annoyingly, but I could just feel a little, and it could have been because it was so darn wet that my kind of my riding pants are starting to slide down and everything stuck to me and stuff. So the cool, the cool thing with the Merida setup is like, like a lot of forward-thinking brands is that they uh, they run very low kind of top tubes, short seat tubes, lots of standover, and that gives you a really wide window of sizes. So that potentially you could choose between three sizes. And it's a good looking bike. Yeah. Like the, that white bike that I rode with the yeah. factory suspension. It looks I was great. Like, it's got great tires, good brakes, the whole thing. I was like, I just, I loved it. Mm. I had such two good, I had like two amazing runs on it. That's all I rode it for. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel the difference in suspension when you were had the range extender on and when you took it off? Didn't did try the range extender, okay. Okay. Um, unfortunately. So that I can't been, answer that question. Yeah, because that would have been interesting. I would be surprised if I don't feel it, but mm. we'll, we will have to try that out. And you'd, also, for another change, day. you'd also like, that's what, yeah. that range extender is what, is it three, three kilos. kilos? You have to change the suspension set, yep. especially your fork. Yeah, definitely. If you fit that. Yeah. 
so um, so there we, we have the Merida. Uh, I think to sum up, get the alloy bike if range is your number one priority, and then get the carbon model if you want the most dynamic handling. Right, so uh, that's a really interesting range of bikes from Merida, and uh, I think uh, that throws out the question to the audience. What do you prefer? Were you gonna prioritize handling or range? Let us know in the comments below. That was a bit Donald Trump then. <laughs> At least it wasn't it like... Was, it was total, that was total Donald Trump! <laughs> Can you leave that in? That's pretty funny. Come on, come on. That's very, don't cut that out. That's hilarious. Do the, do the come dance on. That on. was like totally... <laughs> like a, it, what, is, what is he doing? He does that. <laughs> so, it does so like so easily. <laughs> <laughs>